Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris. Thank you for joining me today. It is a nasty day here in Jacksonville, Florida. And I'll tell you right now, these days like this, well, I like to get in the shop and do a little bit of organization. Nothing too big, but right now, as you see, I'm doing some more French cleats along this wall here. I haven't touched it since I put it up. It's time to do it now. I found that there are three types of French cleats in this community or in this makerspace. And I'm sure there's more. And if you got a different one that you're gonna see in this video, leave it in the comments, I'd like to know. Also, I'm gonna break down those three types and tell you what would be better for your situation. Actually, I don't know that, only you know that. I'll tell you the pros and cons and I'll show you how they work. Let's get right into this. Thanks for joining me. Okay, to get things started, I'm gonna show you right here. I've got a couple of pieces already cut. These are pieces of three quarter inch Baltic birch, big surprise there. I got one that's nine inches, five inches, and three and a half. Now, I'm gonna take my blade and I'm gonna angle it 45 degrees and we're gonna rip these pieces in half. They're gonna be the different styles of cleats. So let's go ahead and get that done. So without fail, every time I adjust the blade on my table saw to any type of degree, I always go with one of these digital angle gauges. Okay, so before I go and cut this on the table saw at a 45 degree angle, I'm gonna try to get this piece into two exact halves. Now, how I'm gonna do that, you just can't put the fence up to, what is this, three and a half inches. You can't put it up to the fence at one and three quarters of an inch, and that will give you half and half. It's not gonna work because you're gonna cut it at a 45. That being said, the calculation is, the thickness of the material, half of that, you need to take away from the fence setting of half of the material itself. So if I set the fence at one and three quarters of an inch to get half of three and a half, hope this is making sense, I also need to subtract half of the width of the piece as well, which is three eighths of an inch. So with all that being said, set it up, make a cut. Let's see how we do. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna take half of the, the width of the material, which is one and three quarters. That's exactly half, but I'm going to minus half of the thickness, which is three eighths. Now that's exactly three eighths, but most plywood is just a little bit thinner than advertised. So we're gonna knock off just like a 32nd of an inch as well. And now we should be good to go. Let's make our cut. Good Lord, if you are still here with me, thank you so much as I go to make sure the camera is on. That was a lot of math, but in turn, you can always just test fit a bunch of these and then come to your desired result. I just found out that this calculation gives me exactly two halves, where if I do this right, there really is no guesswork. So you're gonna find this piece is very sharp after cutting it to a 45, and you wanna get rid of that sharp angle. Two reasons, one, you don't wanna cut yourself on it, and two, you don't want to have it break because this is very brittle. I'm just gonna barely pass this through my table saw. It's just gonna take off maybe an eighth of an inch. It's still gonna give me the strength of the cleat, but you've got no brittle edge. Okay, so behind me I have a mock-up French cleat wall. I've got three styles of cleats and I also have some spacer box. We're gonna go ahead and tack all this in place how I normally do it up on the wall and then we're gonna screw them all in place as well. Here we go, this should be pretty fun. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm building a makeshift cleat wall to kind of give you an illustration of the three types of cleats we're gonna discuss here later in this video. On your right are the very tightly spaced cleats on your left are the very large cleats, but they're moderately spaced. And in the middle are your medium size and they're moderately spaced as well. I'll explain more of that in more detail just in a minute. But to attach the cleats to the wall, I always use just brads and screws, no glue. On the small cleat here, I'm just using two screws parallel to each other. On the medium size, I like to alternate the screws up and down within the piece. As you see, they're staggered. And then on the larger cleat, what I like to do is install two screws about three inches apart, directly one on top of the other. That gives you a little more strength and more on this in just a moment, like I said. But let me show you exactly how a French cleat is made. It's pretty simple and it consists of just three parts. One is a 45 degree angle piece. Two is the actual board that your thing is gonna go up on. And then three is gonna be a little support block. But you may not always need that support block. I'll explain that in a second as well. So to establish these, I'm just gonna use some CA glue to lock everything in place. This is Starbond, definitely go check them out. I have a coupon code to save you 15% as well. All links are in the description. So give them some love and check it out. 
Okay, I figured it would be worth noting exactly what a French cleat is. It's basically two adjoining faces on a 45 degree angle that are used to hold things up, okay? There is, in its truest form, what's going on in the cleat world, okay? Now, this is just for illustration, but you know, you, could, you can make anything. You can make something like this to hold a stapler. And then you can make really large items as well. And I've got an example of that in a video where I put up all kinds of stuff. I'm gonna link that down below too. It's with my 30 foot cleat wall, check that out. But even little things, and these are kind of the, these are the most fun projects to me. So we've got an air conditioner in here now and I've got a remote for it. And oh, let's use this one. Oh, let's use this one. <laughs> it is so cool to put these things up. Now, if I didn't have this backward board on here, I could put it on either one of those. And I'll explain more about this in the next clip. But, and even something like this, where you can place your phone. Pretty cool stuff. If you wanna watch a video on it, you can orient it landscape. Pretty cool stuff, right? All right, so without further ado, like I always say, let me explain these three systems. All right, guys, let's talk about this setup and exactly what these three French cleats are and the versatility of each one. So the first one we're gonna talk about is this one here on your left. This is a two and a half, actually this is more like a two and a quarter inch cleat all the way down spaced every five feet, every five feet, every five inches. Okay, now this, the beauty of this system is, is that you don't need that typical support block like you would see here, because this one, as you see, it fits in, but it's gonna need a bit more, it's gonna need a bit more support here on this backer board. This one, because there's so many cleats, the actual support on your cleat is the next cleat. I know I'm saying cleat a lot, but that's what this video is about. So essentially you put that up, you've got support here, of course, but you've also got this cleat supporting this piece here, and that is the beauty of this system. Now, are there some downsides to this? Well, yeah, a little bit. The reason is, one, it takes a whole lot of time to cut all these 45 degree angle pieces, and two, it also takes extra money. Now, you can do these systems for less money, but this one here is gonna cost you a little bit more, and it's really cool when it's done, though. There's a video by Frank Howard. He did this in his kitchen, or in his closet outside of his kitchen. I'm gonna link it below. You ought to go give that a look. It's, it's pretty ingenious. Okay, moving on to the next option, and it's this one, the middle option. As you can see, the cleats are just a little bit bigger, maybe by only about a half an inch, but they're spaced out a lot greater distances. Now, for illustrations here, I've only spaced these out eight inches, but in my shop, I use this system, and they're spaced out every, you know, probably 10 to 12. And the reason is, is I don't really mind putting these little backer boards on here, these little bitty support pieces. You know, the beauty of this system is that it, it really doesn't take much to get organized and everything is in its place and you can move it around. That's the beauty of it. Now, I like this system because one, I'm not having to cut a ton of cleats, uh, 45 degree angle pieces. Now, even doing this shop, this 30 by 20 foot shop, it took me a while, even using this method and spacing them every 12 inches. I couldn't imagine how long it would have taken to do this one, although I kind of think this is the Mac Daddy of the French cleat. Um, anyway, I like this one because of the utilitarian use and uh, I really think it's the best option in terms of, you know, saving some money and doing this system. All right, let's move on to that one as well. This is, this was pretty interesting and I'm gonna explain why you might use this one if you don't have plywood walls. Okay, so this system right here, I definitely recommend this if you don't have plywood walls. If you have drywall and studs in your garage or shop, reason being is that these you're gonna space every 16 inches and you're gonna want the support of two screws roughly three to four inches apart, giving you a lot of rigidity because you can't put screws every five or six inches in your walls or every eight inches or so. So this one is great because you don't necessarily have to use plywood. You can use one by material. You can use one by sixes work great. You just simply tilt your blade to 45 degrees and you just shave it off at 45 and this is what your cleats consist of. Now, if you've done this method and you've already got these support back pieces, which is great, you need those on some applications and they still work on this thicker cleat, but you don't necessarily need them, okay? This is kind of a mixture of both worlds. You don't need the support block because the piece is so thick. You know, it really is contingent upon what you're hanging, but in most applications, you're not gonna be putting like a massive belt sander on the wall, are you? Unless you do, please let me know. Send me pics on Instagram, why not? Uh, but this, this piece right here is, is thick enough to support this entire cleat, which is actually kind of cool. 
So these, in my opinion, are the three methods. And I think for anyone who wants to get organized, either one of these is great. You know, honestly, just get out there and do it. This has been an absolute wonderful experience to be here on YouTube and showing you guys some of this really simple organization stuff. And I really do appreciate each and every one of you who have reached out thus far and shown me some of the inspiration you've gotten from my shop and my French cleat organization walls, which really, honestly, it's just throwing things up on the wall and then moving things around and tinkering. And that's kind of what it's all about. So all of you out there who have shown me your pictures and and show me what you've done in your shop. I, I so much appreciate that. Keep doing it, keep them coming. And I really think that this is the way to go in terms of putting things, well, I, you know, I don't like to put things away because once they go away, they're out of sight and that's not really how I like to do things in my shop. So anyway, I'm gonna get into this project here and uh, I'm, gonna get, <laughs> I'm gonna finish this project up here and I'm gonna show you where exactly this is gonna live in my shop. Check this out. But first, there's something I have to try. I call this the French Cleat Shop Shop. Check this out, here we go. So this is nothing. I got more trick shots at the end. You have to stay tuned. Yeah, let's go! Not gonna tell you how many times I've tried that, but I think you can gauge by my reaction, right? All right, back to the cleats. That's the beauty, it can go anywhere. Okay, so here are just a few of the applications that I've used over the years. I'm gonna show you a really old one, but I use this all the time and <laughs> This is a, <laughs> a ruler from Lowe's from way back when. It is not a very big cleat, but it, it is tapered. The piece of wood, these two pieces are tapered in holding this ratchet set. And I think that that was probably one of the first French cleat things I'd ever put up on a wall. And I still use it today. But my other favorite is this right here. And these of course are some T-handled Allen keys. And these are made by a company called Bond, was it Bonhaus, I believe, I can't really pronounce it, but they're up in Minnesota, American made. I saw these in Adam Savage's shop years ago, uh, actually before he put a video out maybe a month ago about some of his favorite tools. And as you can see, they've got the dust, the dust to prove that they've been here a while. And they come with this little apparatus here that holds them. And of course I have a, another set by them as well, but this is a metric set kind of tucked up underneath. This is kind of the beauty in a nutshell of the French cleat system, and I love this thing. So anyway, that's it guys. That's all I got for you today. I really think that this is one of those systems that really helps you see what you have and helps you get organized in a very quick and, and very efficient way as well. And I wanna hear what you guys think about this system down in the comments below. Love hearing from you guys. That's all I got. Thank you so much for joining me. Again, my name is Chris. This has been a glimpse inside the process on three different French cleat systems that I think are pretty useful in anyone's space. So that's all I got for you guys. Like I said, I'll see you guys on the next project. And until then, y'all be safe and take care. And thanks again. Okay, so let me preface this. I've tried this, what you're about to see, about 60 times. My daughter joins me in the shop. All we try right. something for good luck, and this Here's happens on luck. the first take. Thank you, baby. I think I could do better. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah! Woohoo! Oh my God! <laughs> All right, truth be told, check this out. This is how beat up this cleat has gotten from doing this, I don't know, maybe, how many times? You don't know. Maybe a hundred times. And then of course, I do this thing with my daughter, kiss for good luck, and it happened. So thank you so much everyone for being here to the end of the video. What can I say? <laughs> Pretty cool moment. Y'all take care.